Well, um, you know, we're working on this series, the seven things the devil doesn't want us to do. And tonight we're going to be in John chapter 4. If you have a Bible, you can turn there. If not, you can grab one in front of you. As you're doing that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just ask you right now, Lord, that you just take our hearts and take our minds, Lord, and just search them. And Father, if there's any sin in any offensive ways, Lord, I just pray right now, Father, that you would convict us of that. And that, Father, there would be true repentance of it. Father, I pray that no one see or hear me, Lord, but they see and hear you. I pray, Father, that you would be glorified and honored in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. The seven things the devil doesn't want us to do. And this is our third part of this series. And we're looking at the witnessing. He doesn't want us to witness. And in John chapter 4, this is a story that is a real neat story, but we're going to look at the end, toward the end of this story. Verses 28 and 29. This is where Jesus had encountered this woman at the well, and him and her had a conversation. And she realized that she was face to face with Jesus. And she realized she needed that eternal water, that eternal life that he was offering her. And this is something that took place at the end of this conversation, verses 28 and 29. So the woman left her jar, her water jar, and went away into town and said to the people, Come, see a man whom told me all that I have ever did. Can this be the Christ? You see, what was taking place here, this woman, she had lived in sin. This woman had baggages and baggages of sin in her life. And when you look at this story and you look at the beginning, how all this happened, she came to the well at a time that she was expecting no one to be there because she had so much shame so much that she was carrying, she didn't even want someone to see her. And she was so guilty and so broken over the things that was going on in her life. And now all of a sudden she was face to face with this man that's pointing out her sins. And as he's pointing out the sins, he's pointing it out to her in a way that she's got to deal with it. She's got to get it right. But something that the devil doesn't want us to do once we get things right with God, we should have excitement. We should have joy. And we should have peace. And through that joy, through that excitement, through that peace, we should want to share it with those that we love. We should want to share it with those in whom we encounter. And this is a picture of a woman that the moment that she was turned, she took off and started telling people as she encountered them. But this is something Satan doesn't want us to do. He will hinder your words as you witness. He's going to try to lie to you and say, you're not going to know what to say. You're not going to know how to approach that situation because you're not going to know the answers. And so Satan is going to try to hinder our words. And he's going to try to make us go mute. He wants us not to speak of our encounter with Christ. Do you think Satan wanted this woman to leave this well and run into town and start telling the whole town about Christ? No. He wanted to shut her mouth. He wanted to silence her. But guess what? Jesus had the victory. The Lord had the victory because she would not remain silent. Can you imagine this walk? Now let's say the well was here and the town was way over here. As she was headed from the well to the town, can you imagine the conversation she was having in her head about all the things that she had done wrong? all the wrongdoings, and all that stuff was probably welling up inside of her. The shame, the guilt, and the memories of the things that she had done wrong. 
And she said, these people know the things in which I have done. And the closer and the closer she got to town, can you imagine that Satan was trying to silence her? But as she approached town, she never allowed Satan to have that victory. The sad thing is, we have too many Christians that have allowed Satan to silence them. They have allowed the lies in which Satan has spoken to them that has caused them to close their mouths. And guess who got the victory? Satan. The second point that happens here, he will hinder our lives as a witness. You see, many times we look at the, through the Bible and we see hypocrisy. We see sins in people where they have faults. You see, Satan will throw things in our path that will cause us to stumble and fall. And the thing is, is when we stumble and fall, we feel guilty and we feel ashamed and we feel inadequate to carry the word, to carry the name of Christ to someone. And I'm going to be honest with you, there are times in my life I stand in that crossroad. There are times in my life through the week I make mistakes. There's mistakes in my life that Satan wants to remind me about. There's weaknesses in myself that Satan likes to remind me about. And Satan likes to point and say, because you stumbled and you fell, because you have this weakness, because you have this shortcoming, you're not worthy enough to carry the name of Christ. And when I buy into those lies, when I buy into that, I give Satan victory. But when I am willing to get up from those stumbles and falls, when I am willing to walk past the shortcomings, when I'm willing to go beyond that that is wrong and profess the name of Jesus Christ, who gets the victory? Jesus does. And here's one of the things. Don't let Satan trip you up. Don't worry about the words in which you're going to speak. Don't worry about the shortcomings of your life. I'm going to tell you, Jesus even looked at the people when there was a woman standing there and he told them, said, pick up the, as they had these stones, as if it's a stone, he said, the one whom is without sin casts the first stone. Do you realize the people that the Lord is wanting us to talk to, they're sinners too? Do you realize they got shortcomings? Do you realize that they have mistakes too? You see, that's the thing about Christians. We are saved even beyond our mistakes. Even in the midst of all of our filth, the Lord still loves us. And the Lord still pours His amazing grace upon His children. The thing is, is we need to start living as if we're walking in amazing grace. Let's pray.